Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And if you're new to my channel, it's all about DIY self-built camper vans, much like the one I'm sitting in right now. And if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. I'll put a little link down there, a little red icon, as you can see, just for your convenience. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss a thing. Now today, it's absolutely chucking it down. So I thought I'd sit in my van, answer some questions. Questions in particular, about my green camper my green Volkswagen T4 I've had loads of questions absolutely inundated with questions about that van really surprised and quite shocked at the response I got from that little clip video I mean it's only like a five minute video but um yeah again it was a rainy day when I made that video so I thought it's raining again let's make a video about that video <laughs> that makes any sense at all so i've wrote down some questions so let's get right into it now one of the main questions i get asked quite frequently is about the green and black interior i'll put a photograph up right now as you can see it's a rock and roll bed and it's covered with this lovely vinyl and that vinyl was actually done by a guy that worked in a boatyard well not a boatyard a marina where they restored pleasure craft so that was his that was his job he would replace the vinyl um, on speedboats and yachts and stuff like that and i was lucky enough to get him to do my van as well but if you look at this photograph closely you can see there's a gap down the back of the bed and the reason that gap's there is because unfortunately he pulled the vinyl too tight rolled the edges off so the foam uh, got compressed underneath the uh, the vinyl causing that gap at the back of the bed which really wasn't his fault I just forgot to ask him to make sure he kept it all nice and square and if I'd used thicker foam I wouldn't have got that gap and this this is what happens quite often to people they um, especially with the rock and roll beds it's a mistake a lot of people make so I just want to quickly address that and what I'll do I'll show you with these two pieces of foam these two sponges now imagine the green bit is the base of the bed and this green bit is the back of the bed and this is your foam like that right so this is how it should sit with no gap and then when you bring the bed together it kind of comes down like this and it all joins and that's how the hinges work they work to make it lever like this and obviously move forward at the same time really clever those hinges absolutely amazing bit of engineering whoever come up with those absolute genius so getting back to this that's how the bed sits like that this is your base that's your back and as the hinges do their thing it rolls forward like that and comes down and back like that and that's how they work but is the but if the foam isn't thick enough if this is that brings that down low this one ends up back like that and you end up with that gap but they still work it still brings it together and it really does confuse a lot of people how comes there's a gap but when you bring it down they still meet because the the boards these bottom bit the green bit are designed to come together so it doesn't matter how thick the foam is they will still come together and the gap will still join but when you put them up you end up with this gap because the foam isn't thick enough to join the gap together I hope that makes sense but yeah if you're making if you're in the process of making a rock and roll bed make sure your foam is at least six inches thick otherwise you'll end up with that gap if you use four inch foam you'll definitely end up with a gap you need at least six inches uh, depth of your foam okay so hopefully that helps somebody <laughs> this table people ask me loads of people where'd you get the table where did you get the table that's <laughs> like every other question that table i simply got it off ebay and it was a pure fluke that the color matched the uh, the rest of the van i'll put a link to that table um in the description of this video as well oh what was the gauges on the dashboard yeah a couple of people asked the, on, I'll show the photograph now um, those gauges are because it had air suspension this van was an XAA recovery van and it had air suspension in the back and it was a self leveling system I believe um, it wasn't working when I got the van um, I had to rip all the electrics out and fit a switch and I fitted a toggle switch down by the driver's seat and it was simply an on off switch and air release switch so that um, I could control the height at the back of the van and the nice thing about this was that it had these airbag suspensions in the back I'll put another photograph up I think I've got a photo of the, uh, the air tank this was a downside I had to have an air tank and compressors in the back 
But the good thing was, if I parked on a hill, like a slight incline either way, I could adjust the back suspension to level the van out. And it was brilliant for that, absolutely fantastic. Downside was, um, you had to keep an eye on it because it did kind of bleed air out every now and again and you'd end up going down a motorway and really rough ride. So the gauges on the uh, dashboard would tell me how much air is in each airbag in the back suspension. So that's what the gauges were on the dashboard for those of you that were asking. Excuse me. Um, oh, did I have solar on that van? No, I didn't have solar panels on that van. Um, I just used a split charge relay, like a really old fashioned type one, where you turn the ignition on, the relay turns on, and charges your leisure battery. In fact, I didn't even have a leisure battery, it was just an old battery out of another van I had. <laughs> it was like a car engine battery, and I used that as a leisure battery. That was fine, it was all right. <clears throat> and when it died, I went and bought another one from the brake yard for a fiver, I think. So yeah, no leisure battery, just a normal engine battery. Yeah, and it worked fine. So uh, all those people that spend thousands of pounds on these lithium-ion batteries are cr oh, crazy. Just get an old battery out of the brake yard if you're a bit, you know, if you're a bit hard up for cash. Uh, it worked fine. It worked for me. Did I paint the van myself? No, I didn't. I must confess, I did not paint that van. Although the guy that did paint it, or had it painted, he had a little accident in it. He crashed it, uh, damaged the front bumper, lost heart in it. And that's when I brought it. I brought it with a slight bit of damage. So I did actually paint the front bumper and the lower portion of the grille um, in my workshop. I painted that myself, but that was it. <clears throat> and uh, funny enough, the colour of that van <laughs> was the same colour as the Asda supermarket trucks. It was the same paint code. <laughs> so that van got nicknamed the Asda van. How long did it take? How long did the, the build of the Volkswagen take? Actually, it was a really quick build. That's why I used IKEA cupboards, because I was, um, when I brought that van, I brought that van specifically to go to a festival, a rather well-known festival called Glastonbury. A small gathering of people. <laughs> And I needed to build that van really quick just to get, so I could get to Glastonbury. And that's why I chose IKEA furniture. And it turned out to be a really good choice because, it was, one, it was cheap. It was really quick to build. In fact, the bed, building the bed in the back of the van took longer than actually working out where the cupboards were going to go. But that was my first priority was to put a bed in the van. So I put the bed in the van and then I thought, well, I need a cupboard. So I went to IKEA. Saw how cheap the cupboards were, so instead of just buying one cupboard, which which my original plan was, just to buy one cupboard, I ended up buying five and building out a whole in van. Yeah, it literally took a couple of weeks. It was brilliant. Um, yeah, a lot of jiggling about though. I've, I've, as you can see in this photograph, in this photograph you can see I've laid it that way, and then in this one I laid it another different way, <laughs> and until finally I got it right. And that little box you see to the left. No, to the right, sorry, next to the bed, um, I had to build that little box as a step for the bed to sit on when the bed was extended. Uh, and I just used a door to make that bed, uh, that step. I used a, a leftover cupboard door and just cut it up and made that step, which also turned into a little chest, which was quite nice. Do I have internet in the van? Do I have internet in this van? I think they mean by that. Um, no, I don't have internet in this van, but I do have my phone. My phone's uh, on the free network. Not free as in it's free, I don't have to pay for it, but the, the letter free <laughs> makes sense. And I have unlimited internet on my phone. Um, it's kind of on the dear side, but I don't have to worry about internet. I can download what I like, upload what I like, and yeah, I can roam where I like as well. I've got roaming on that plan as well it's a really good plan yeah if you're thinking about buying a network for internet use then yeah free mobile definitely um worth considering it's not a paid advert by the way so another question i get asked all the time uh, do i prefer having a high roof fan as opposed to a low roof fan well i've got to say having a low roof fan is really really convenient especially for parking parking a low roof van is so much easier than parking a high top van so uh yeah it really depends on your personal use and what you want it what you want out of your van where do you want to go with your van if you want to go to hot spots like tourist hot spots then definitely a small volkswagen t4 perfect for that 
um, because you can pretty much park anywhere you like. You can park in any car park, you can sleep in any car park. I've actually, actually slept in my T4 in the car park next to the Cutty Sark. Um, it's an underground car park and I've stayed all night in that car park. I even stayed in central France in the underground car park of the Louvre in my old bay window. And you wouldn't do that in a transit. Mind you, this was years ago before the current political situation and all the current troubles. So yeah, low roof, definitely a bonus for parking. Downside is you can't stand up, you can't have a shower in the van. Um, and that's it. <laughs> The advantages of having a low roof fan far outweigh the advantages of having a higher roof fan. But again, it really does depend on what you want out of your van. If you're living in your van long term and touring long distance, then maybe a higher roof van with a shower is the way to go. But for parking, ease of parking, definitely a low roof van. And this van, I can get it into some car parks. I can get into... Uh, yeah, Blue Water Shopping Centre, I can get into that underground park, car park, just about. Um, yeah, and in France as well, I can get into some car parks with the barriers. But um, in Britain, no chance. I have to find street parking with this van. Oh, where's my toilet? Did I have a toilet? Did I have a toilet in the T4? Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> much to my shame but I did have like one of these cassette things um what they call them porta potties but I had a porta potty in my workshop so I had no um flushing toilet in the workshop so the porta potty in the workshop I'd put in the back of the van if ever I went anywhere just for emergency use um but most of the time I just use public toilets it's the same as this van I've just got a porta potty under the bed where I'm sitting right now um yeah you don't need anything flash just a you know, bucket of a bag and some cat litter yeah you get the picture nasty but it works all right if it's good enough for the cat it's good enough for me <laughs> let's not talk about that have i still got the van no ironically i sold that van to uh, buy a sprinter van because i wanted something bigger and I so I sold the van to buy a sprinter but at the same time literally i think it was about a week after i sold the the small Volkswagen, um, Railtrack decided we could no longer have the archways as a workshop. We had to move out for health and safety reasons. They came along, gave us a month's notice, and there were eight businesses in that in those workshops. Um, I'll try and find a photo. And there eight workshops, eight businesses, eight self-employed people, all out of work. And they said we can all move back in as soon as they've done the modifications to all the wiring and stuff. And that was five years ago, and they're still boarded up now. Such a shame, such a waste. Um, but because of that, I never got around to building my Sprinter, because I didn't have the room anymore. Um, because when I moved out of the railway arch, which I was living in, well, I shouldn't have been really, but um, nevertheless, I moved out of the railway arch into a mortuary. <laughs> Sounds a little bit grim, but it wasn't really that bad. I'll put a picture up of the mortuary. It was a lovely building, a really, really nice building. Downsize was, had no parking whatsoever, so I couldn't stay there. And then from the mortuary, I built my first large camper. It was a transit um, welfare van. It was already, already had a heater in it, already had the electrics in it. It was like a real quick build, a quick fix, just to get me out of the mortuary. And I lived in that van for a little while, um, up until the place I live now. But because of that van, that's when I started doing YouTube videos, so everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to all you lovely people if it wasn't for that happening. Because a friend of mine suggested after I built that van, oh, you should make YouTube videos, you're really good at this. So, here I am. <laughs> so, if you like this video, please do give me the thumbs up, and most importantly, leave a comment below in the comments section of this video. And if you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. I'll put a little thing there with my face on it. Just for your convenience, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss a thing. And I'll put a link up there, around about here somewhere, <laughs> to this van build. And a link up here to a, a video that may interest you. Thanks for watching. Ta-da for now.